Hey there, I hope you're well today. I wanted to take just an opportunity now to share a few thoughts with you about something that I've been reading in the book of Luke. I'm calling it Seeing Christ in the Crises. It's no secret that this year, 2020, has been unlike anything I think any of us have ever known. It's definitely one that I'm not going to soon forget. The dust seemed to finally settle in the first wave of crazy, the global pandemic, when a second crazed outbreak occurred in the nationwide protests. And amidst all of the insanity surrounding us due to the corona violence, if you will, I wanted to pass on something that greatly encouraged me. I trust it'll do the same for you. So if you're able, join me. We'll be in Luke chapter 17. And as you make your way there, I'll give you a brief synopsis of the beginning of the text. The passage starts off with Jesus teaching his disciples lessons on forgiveness without hesitation and faith without reservation. We'll pick it up in verse 11, though, where the Lord begins telling us a very interesting account of 10 men who are in a desperate situation that I believe we can all identify with on some level. So Luke 17, beginning in verse 11, here's what it says. While traveling to Jerusalem, he passed between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he told them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And while they were going, they were cleansed. But one of them, seeing that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice gave glory to God. He fell face down at his feet, thanking him. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17. Then Jesus said, were not 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Didn't any return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he told him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. In this text, we find three ways that these men were detached or isolated and how Jesus bridges the gap. First, they were detached from common places. They couldn't go to routine places or do everyday things like show up at the office to get things done or or even mingle at the coffee shop with their buddies. No, you see, their condition made them legally have to isolate themselves from all others. Kind of sounds familiar, right? Except these guys had it far worse than anything we can imagine. You remember how weird it was at the beginning of this COVID-19 outbreak when the CDC mandated us to stay home and only go out when absolutely necessary. And whenever you did go out, You pass by someone and they look at you like you're infected and you're looking at them the exact same way, right? Like everybody was highly on edge and hyper suspicious of one another. And you just felt so dirty being out around strangers. At least I did at first. But for these 10 lepers who had a contagious and permanent skin disease, it was far worse. They had to literally shout as loud as they could, Leper! Unclean! Stay away! Leper coming! Leper! That's a great courtesy they gave others. I'm pretty sure if everyone infected with the coronavirus did that, we wouldn't even have a pandemic in the first place. Joking aside, it was humiliating for these guys. But then we come to verse 12, which tells us that Jesus hears their distant cries for help, and he draws near to them. You see, no matter how distant we feel from God, he is always willing and he's glad to come swiftly to us whenever we call out to him for mercy. In fact, Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that he's a God who's rich in mercy. But not only were they detached from common places, they were also detached from a community of people. These guys were obviously limited in the people they could be around. I mean, they couldn't be around their, their very own families or any society Ancient social distancing to the max. And yet verse 11 tells us that Jesus on his way to Jerusalem had to pass between Samaria and Galilee. In other words, Jesus was on his way to the holy city and he came to the very crossroads, the dividing line between two extremely hostile cultures of people. It was at this point where he engaged in the war of extreme racism between Jews and Samaritans. These 10 were were already limited in who they could be around, but even in this small group, they were even more divided and separated into subgroups, all because of their petty yet very intense disdain for each other's ethnicity. And I love this. The unlikely hero Jesus makes of this story, as he tells it to his fellow countrymen, his disciples, 
was a Samaritan who returns to give God praise and glory for what he did. See, Jesus tells them to go and appear before the priests, which had to be very perplexing for them as they're obviously unclean and the priests are, well, kind of the most holy and clean people ever, right? But yet they obeyed him. And Jesus is letting us know that there is no spiritually elite in his kingdom. He levels a playing field and makes it clear that absolutely anyone can approach him and receive his grace and his healing, no matter their color, their culture, or class, when they come to him with a humble and repentant heart. They were detached from common places, and they were detached from a community of people. But lastly, they were detached from Christ's presence. Most of them were anyways. You see, Scripture tells us that 90% of these Desperate men never came back to praise God or show any type of appreciation for what he had done to them. Isn't that most people's attitude today? I mean, like, God, make this temporary thing in my life happen for me. And regardless of if it does or not, I mean, they ghost mode him because they're really only concerned about trivial matters instead of the eternal affairs, namely the most important issue of all, their own souls being reconciled to God. But one, one of the 10 men the Samaritan, noticed that healing didn't come from the priests they were on their way to see. Healing came from Jesus alone. And as soon as the Samaritan man realized it, he chucked a U-turn to go back to Jesus and give him proper praise and appreciation, shouting louder and more sincerely than he had ever done before, while simultaneously falling on his face in the presence of Jesus, who tells this man that his faith has saved him. He was not just temporarily saved from his physical condition, but in that moment, he experienced spiritual deliverance, never again to be separated from God. The rest of the diseased men, sadly, they'd never experienced complete healing like that Samaritan did. I don't know where this finds you right now in this really weird juncture of our lives and nation. As we come out of this unforgettable period of social distancing and destructive protesting, again, I don't know where you are right now. Maybe there's a part of you that's, that's been detached or disconnected from Jesus. But I want you to know that despite all that's going on in our world and whatever it is in your life, take heart that Jesus hears us in the distance, he sees us in our distress, and he heals us from our defeating conditions. So how do you find Christ in the midst of crises? Call on Jesus, obey his word, and don't forget to praise him for who he is and what he's done for you.